Welcome, everybody. Uh, I am Helen Martins. This is Lona Urum. Can I say that, please? In <laughs> anybody who doesn't speak Danish. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome. It's great to see you here. I think we'll be um, admitting a few more people in a minute, but that's fine. I'll just start now. I want to start by saying that um, your Copenhagen is a safe stage and that um, it's a place where we can voice different opinions and we do not tolerate any kind of harassment or discrimination. And we have a code of conduct that we ask you to follow, please. Um, and I already announced that I'm recording this and I'll put it on our YouTube channel for people who couldn't make it tonight and maybe want to see it. Another thing, a very important thing on my next post-it is that the um, York's Copenhagen Call for Papers opens tonight. Today. So if anybody would like to submit a talk, please write to hello at uxcopenhagen.com. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think um, would fit well with the theme, which is creating a culture change for 2022. And the dates are March 28th and 29th. And we're hoping for a live event next year. Um, yeah, anyway, tonight I'm here with Luna and we are going to be discussing the, um, the theme for next year. Uh, and we actually start, we thought of, well, several reasons for choosing the theme. One is that I keep hearing at the conference that UXers still don't like have a place at the, at the at, what's it called? At the they don't have a seat at the decision-making table. So that's one of the things we'll be talking about tonight. Another one is um, employee experience. Um, and the third one is like different isms, ageism, uh, I can't racism, all these different isms and biases and privilege. And those are kind of the three major themes that I think we'll be um, working with at US 2022. Um, so Luna and I started talking about, both of us have had the experience of being laid off and you're usually left with the feeling of, of yeah, a bad feeling, feeling worthless. And why is that? And we started thinking, well, could we use our UX skills to maybe, you know, UX the culture of a company. And one of the things we could start with was looking at, you know, the journey of being laid off, which is a very nice way of saying fired. <laughs> right? What's the difference, right? So would yeah, it be I think there is a difference. Is like, there? I think if, if you're done, if you're, if you're laid off and a nice way you're laid off, the, the, well, the feeling that the user us being laid off is, uh, said, well, the, the feeling when afterwards we're sitting back and, and having is laid, is fired if it's not done in the right way. Or yeah, right yeah. Way. Okay, I guess it's so. a centric way. Anyway. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and that's the whole thing. I mean, what does what is the company signaling by this whole you know exit journey? And is there anything we as UXers would be able to do using our tool set to improve this? Um, and then we started talking about what other aspects of a um, company culture that we maybe could you know, influence with our UX skills or user-centric skills methods. And then we started talking about, okay, what about like job ads, you know? I mean, the whole journey of the employee experience, you know, getting hired, uh, the job ad, getting hired, onboarding, exit, right? So um, if we start looking at even just the ads, um, so what is the company signaling with these ads, you know, is it targeting, what's their target group? Are they targeting young people? Are they targeting seniors? Are they expressing that they're looking for a senior, but then all of the, um, the perks are, you know, oh, we have footy and we've got uh, Friday beer. And, you know, I mean, if you're like mid thirties, you might not be interested in that because you might have small kids, or maybe you just don't feel like hanging out with your, you know, colleagues, maybe you're an introvert, all these different reasons. So what are the what are you expressing with your job ad? Perks and benefits. Um, and then there's the whole recruiting. You know, how do you respond to people that apply for the job? Are you, do you leave them hanging? Do you respond to them? Do you write back and say, listen, we've had so many, so many applicants that we can't respond quickly? Uh, do, uh, do you auto reject people? Don't do that. You know, <laughs> send the automatic, oh, we don't need your skills. That bad. And then once uh, you've attracted these people, um, what do you do to retain them? You know, are you living up to the promises you made in the job ad? That kind of thing. And then the whole onboarding thing, is there even an onboarding? I mean, both of us have experiences with, you know, either 
yes or no. There's there's been a big onboarding. You know, I was hired at Nokia in 2001, and it was like a you know a two week onboarding where we were pretty much you know basically flown to Finland with the sauna experience and everything. <laughs> and and then other times you're just kind of thrown into a job, yeah. and they expect you to be able to you know uh, just do the job right away. Um, so, you know, the whole thing is, the whole point of this discussion is that everything, every aspect of this has been designed. And is there anything that we can do to change it, to influence it? Does anybody have any com comments about this, the part about the employee experiment, experience? Experiment. <laughs> it feels like that. Yeah, yeah sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, feel free to just do, because there's only like six of us in here. So feel free to just uh, jump in if you've got anything to say. Um, so the other aspect is that at UX Copenhagen, I keep hearing UXers and designers say that they don't have any power or mandates. And why is this still an issue? I mean, this was an issue 20 years ago. Why are we still thinking about this? You know, is it because decisions about UX are actually made without UXers, without the designers, you know? Is it because UX is still not valued? I don't know, does anybody? Yeah, or is it a, uh, it has been a buzzword for, for such a long time now, actually still a buzzword in some corporations. So is it, we have to have a UX department or just one um, lonely wolf uh, UX on board? And that's a, a, what did you call it? A, a prize, not a prize. Token a, a UX. To token UX, yeah. So we can take that off for uh, in this organization, and there's actually not any mandate behind that. Uh, we can get to uh, to close to the user or any user at all, uh, for instance. Yeah. Any comments to that? Oh, uh, I have one. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Please. Uh, yeah, go ahead, please. Um, I I think uh, design. Uh, in general, is a uh, is uh, something that a lot of people, if not everybody, has some opinion on. Yeah. And and when presenting design, there's a lot of uh, I think I think that I think that and and everybody's opinions is like it's the UX designer's job to like uh, uh, be the gatekeeper of the good strategic design, right? And you have mm -hmm. to be able to to argument uh, for the great decisions uh, I believe even more than you had to do uh, back in the days uh, with the identity design and stuff like that um, uh, I, I think that the main reason is is generally there's still this kind of thing that but design is just stuff looking pretty and everybody has an opinion on that. And, and also everybody is, feels like they are uh, advocates for the user. Uh, well, I believe the user, oh, this looks very user-friendly. I think this will be uh, way more user-friendly or stuff like that, instead of actually going back to the insights and this will be more user-friendly because of this, because mm -hmm. of uh, what we know. Um, um, yeah, yeah I, I totally agree. And I, actually, I think that UX has made a, such an, uh, well, have been very helpful for designers uh, because I've, I've been here for a long time uh, and have been employed as a designer and and had that struggle with this putting color on the product that always have been designed. Um, but I think actually UX have, have improved that a lot because you have you have taken the, the color and shapes out of that uh, discussion for a long time and then put it in at the, at the last minute, but in, in a, when you get to, as a designer, be in that process uh, just without the colors and the shapes and you have that in your back mind or in your sketchbooks, uh, but, but you are in a, such an early stage that you can, that you can, um, um, Probably influence. influence it, yeah. And that's a big, I have experienced that as a big plus for me. Uh, so 
so I could get out of that discussion about the colors and the shapes and all the user-friendly um, <laughs> opinions. Yeah. Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, a lot of times when we're designing, uh, is it because, you know, we get to attach to our designs as our output and a lot less as what business it's going to get or impact it's going to have as a business? Because sometimes I feel like, you know, uh, I, I'll uh, sometimes have these ideas, right? Oh, I want to do it this way and this magnificent uh, designs I want to create and I get carried away with um, those ideas and thoughts and, you know. So in that sense, somewhere do you think we then lose track of what will be uh, making those business decisions and judgments, you know, rather than, and it could be as simple as maybe designing something will take a lot of, you know, time to design, but then that might not have, that might in fact have a negative repercussion to, to the business itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so then uh, having a seat at the table maybe will be a lot more easier or uh, effective if I could, you know, prove that, uh, prove that, you know, um, I'm actually creating business uh, impact mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, what the board or the other people really want. It could be, you know, users, it could be uh, the revenue generated or any of the metrics that the company is really after. Mm -hmm. So but, I'm just I mean, do designers have to know about business? Yeah, I, I mean, think we, we have to have it in mind. Data. Sorry, I, I mean, I think we have to have it in mind business, right? I mean, value proposition is also key to any kind of designs UX that we create. It needs to bring value, right? Uh, both for the users and value for the business. But I do think that no one should be a lonely wolf. <laughs> and in, in that sense, you know, the same way we collaborate with the developers, I think we should also collaborate with the business uh, within the company. So obviously we shouldn't be the only for people who are advocating for certain things to happen, but it needs to be a collaborative work amongst everyone in the team. Um, and I think that sometimes perhaps we ourselves don't necessarily try to get in through that door right. um, and be next to the table because that also means responsibility. Yeah. That also means consequences, right? Because it's not just about dreaming and saying, oh, I want to do, you know, change the whole interface. It means also taking responsibility on what's going to happen if that will not work. Then you can't just say like, oh, well, sorry. So, yeah. Yeah. And just to conclude my uh, thought in addition to that, sometimes I feel like, you know, like uh, a great artist like Picasso, he, he had this uh, business acumen and flair for art. That's where we know, you know, cast over any other artist. That's yeah. all. And they get that kind of success. We had uh, Donald Norman on stage in 2020 online. Um, and he was also very adamant about, you know, designers having to know business and having to be able to speak the, the lingo, you know, and being able to speak to the um, upper management. We have to. Yeah, because in in often cases is because you have, you're designing a application of someone, well, from my point of view, anyway. Um, and that's, for me, it's a natural uh, team to have both business design and uh, technicians mm -hmm. uh, in that same team uh, as equals to, to, uh, to add to the, uh, to the project and, and being, uh, as close to the user-centric methods, uh, uh, all of us. Um, <laughs> um, so, so for me, it's it's. I don't necessarily have to have that business knowledge, uh, but I have to have in mind that it's the importance of it and and the necessary necessity of it. Uh, but I have a a. a, a, a person in the, within the team that deeply understand the business so we can yeah we can um, brainstorm on the the right approach for yes. the um, yes yeah, so it doesn't have to be everybody i mean you know no i, I actually think that the one the lonely wolves that yeah. can do it all uh, is um, well in my belief you can't do everything no very good you can do everything uh, mediocre mm -hmm. if if mm -hmm. best uh, so I prefer, personally, I prefer to work in teams where they have specialists in, in the, 
technical depth uh, of the solution and in the business um, and and me uh, I have a, a design a, a graphic design and, and UI design background so I have the visual um, uh, approach to to doing the UX so I think that's I, I feel very comfortable in that mm -hmm. uh, I nearly call it threesome what do you call it <laughs> sorry triangle um, tri yeah. <laughs> yeah that's uh, yeah for me, uh, the, the business, if you can speak business, if, or at least if I can speak business, then uh, I have very uh, weak uh, arguments for my design. Uh, I feel like I'm being listened to more often if I speak the business part as well. And that doesn't have to mean that I have to have a degree or, or stuff like that. That just means that, well, we can accomplish this user goal in several ways. There is the expensive one, mm -hmm. uh, which takes a long time and very expensive. And then there is the uh, ugly, hacky one, and we only get like 80% of to the goal, stuff like that. I think that's important that you have that aspect as well. Otherwise, it's just, it's, it's hard to argue uh, to make these changes. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, it's yeah. mainly just art if, for me if I can't argue. Yeah, and, and often they uh, you you are put in at the very end as the, as a yeah. visual yeah. display. You are put in the very end to just color it up or, or pimping it up or yeah, and and you know uh, yeah. every every company has a strategy. And in, in, in most strategies, it's just something like, well, for the user, loyalty, stuff like that. So you could just uh, pin into that strategy when, you, when you're arguing, stuff like that. Uh, have the strategy on your backbone to use in your uh, arguments. Uh, and that's also part of the business. So. I don't hear of any um, developers having to have those skills, though. Or having to argue why they're important. I think if they want to grow personally, then I think they need to. So it's also about if you just want to be a pawn on the table and just be pushed around and just told what to do, or if you do want to make that decision, then I think even 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 a developer who is interested could be able to join the table too. Because their opinion and their level of understanding complexity is crucial that combination of the technical profile, the business profile, and let's say the design profile, like those three, they're crucial. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and I don't think that it can survive without neither of them. Like all three of them has to be at the table. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally agree. I have really have the, the pleasure of working with a, a lot of uh, very talented programmers and and uh, also very interesting in sitting at the table at the same time where we are, when we as you should come in now, uh, uh, in the, uh, the concept developing. And sometimes uh, I also hear from them that they are, they are coming in quite late where some designers have made a, uh, a, a design and the concept. Uh, so I, I, my experience is that they have uh, equal interest in being at the table mm -hmm. as we do, mm -hmm. actually. Um, and that's, uh, yeah, for me, that's just the approach to take to, to develop uh, applications and products. And, uh, yeah. I, I often hear developers talk uh, business wise. Okay. Maybe maybe not directly, but at least stuff like, well, if we have to make this feature, we can go this way. Yeah. Oh, we can go this way. So in that way, I think that they speak a lot of uh, in the business interest. If they see some design, well, we can reuse this component, then we don't have to do like that. Or, mm -hmm. uh, okay, redesign the website. Should we make a completely clean slate or should we just template the old one? So mm -hmm. I believe yeah. that's some kind of business uh, uh, talk. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what do you think of the whole um, of the whole thing we're talking about um, with the employee experience, like the um, you know getting hired in the ad and what that says about the company culture? Anybody have any comments on that? I mean, 
I can comment. I had an extremely pleasant recently experience of getting hired. <laughs> um, I think that what I liked is the informal way of writing the ad that okay. communicated a lot to me because I think in general, because I mean, I'm, I work for IBM Client Innovation Center and I was a little bit like hesitant because I was thinking IBM, does this mean like suits and jackets? A little bit biased, but that was my impression. And um, the informal way of writing helped me to understand that, okay, this is not necessarily what I will be experiencing. And I think that they have been so straightforward about their process, how they're, like, how they're about to hire. They were extremely fast and efficient. And they had the whole like process overview of where I am within the application process you know, where I'm about to go in the next stage. So there were no uh, unexpected interviews coming again and again and again. Like it was so clear for me on what's about to happen. I perhaps did not know the timeline in general. Like I didn't know if it will take a week or, you know, two months. Mm -hmm. um, but they have been, yeah, extremely, extremely uh, transparent. Um, and it's so important, I think. Uh, when you are extremely excited about the job and, you know, knowing what to expect um, is extremely important. And are they living up to it then afterwards? Sorry? Are they living up to all the promises? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, really, beyond. <laughs> beyond. So I, I highly recommend, if there's any developers, please apply. <laughs> but... Um, in general, like, the, I mean, as you mentioned before, the onboarding, you know, the sending the information prior to that, calling, the, every time they were about to tell me that I'm going through the next round, they actually called me. Oh. Um, and that was super nice. And uh, what else? And then, yeah, of course, like the whole onboarding experience, the, you know, everything ready for you, ready to go, pre-installed, I mean, mm -hmm. super nice. Mm -hmm. Great to hear. Yeah. So, so, uh, yeah. Hey, please, I'm sorry. 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 Yeah, uh, just a uh, cross question to Arika. Uh, before you went through the onboarding uh, experience and everything, what was it that really attracted you to the job itself, like the job posting? What was it that you really saw that resonated with you uh, before you applied? To be completely honest, the word associate. <laughs> it, was a, it was an associate UX position and it does not happen very often, as maybe some of us know. So the fact that they were willing, I mean, a consultancy is willing to hire an associate. That kind of, for me, spoke it all. That they're willing to give a chance to a younger profile um, that is just as eager to perform and learn regardless of the years of experience. So that show that they're open to, you know, the, uh, diversify their their portfolio and not just be stuck with those with the seniors so that was yeah. nice that's another issue that we were talking about actually also is ageism which will be a big topic for them the conference um and and it's because um you know we keep seeing that or, or we've heard that you know in our opinion putting a junior and a senior together would be the ideal situation right you've got like the, the apprenticeship kind of you know old school way of learning things uh, but that's not the way it is these days, right? It's more like you actually hear about juniors trying to battle, you know, the seniors and mm -hmm. and like uh, uh, respect missing and yeah, and, and, and the whole uh, idea about having junior and senior at all uh, is just left out. It's yeah. only in matter of uh, of uh, a title and a salary maybe, and not actually in the work you're doing. Yeah. Uh, so with find that there is, it can be a battle and that's, uh, well, that's such a shame because yeah. we can learn uh, so much from each other and benefit from it, uh, each other. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I don't know if it's this trade as a UX because that's still very young yeah. um, and we haven't had a lot of history. Uh, we come from very different backgrounds uh, often. Um, the older ones, older. especially the older yeah. ones. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and and UX in general is very broad. So you have uh, 
from the psychology uh, uh, way in and or the technical or the design or uh, a lot of different uh, work ethics way in mm -hmm. uh, and, and and as we have talked about teams as well that's the same problem I think we we don't yet have a a, um, a very strong um, same work ethics or I don't know how to put it um, between seniors and juniors yeah between seniors and juniors and between the, the, the different um, uh, approaches to UX um, of, often I see UX as a as a title not a a uh, department okay I would much rather see it as a department because yeah. my experience you can have an equal good uh, user experience developer and oh, yeah. a business person than you can as a designer or, or uh, different ways. And um, I think that's still in the, uh, in the early stages <laughs> of landing the right thing because you all also often struggle with uh, transitioning into working agile or user centric in the same time. I think that's, that's so many ways in that is can feel like a battlefield sometimes, I think. There's no, no, or, or you're alone on the platform and everybody is on moving platforms at yeah. the same time. Oh, um, sometimes it feels like. That's why I also think that when it comes to the, to the job ad, I think that the company should actually say and explain that if the person aspires to work with these particular tasks, they should apply. Because I think many things you can really learn. You can you can Google many things. You can ask your colleagues. But it's more about what kind of UX person do you want to be? I personally, for example, never have ever had a workshop facilitation before. But I have mentioned in my application that this is something that I would like to work with, which I haven't been working with. And that was also one of the selling factors for my manager because they were looking for someone that would be able or at least would want to do those things, you know? Um, so I think it's also about not so much the prior experience, but what is the future experience that you want for your career to be like? And, you know, if, if, if the two matches, if the manager is willing to take a risk, uh, because perhaps the personality traits are there and you can fit into the team, um, then perhaps it's a good match, but it's about, of course, taking that risk, uh, from both sides, because as in, I think it's important that the power should be equally divided that we are not in this sense of that it's only the employer who is winning. Both parties involved should win from this transaction, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm also buying a product. Like I, I'm, I'm buying my experience, as you said. So this is the experience that I'm buying as a future employee. Mm -hmm. um, so therefore, especially in Denmark now, there is such a actually shortage of professionals in our industry that they should be all fighting for us. Um, and we should be the ones kind of like in the game of prones choosing where do we want to go, right? So it's about having that confidence as well um, and not giving too much power to the employer. Right. But I mean, that also takes a lot of resources, right? If you, um, if you hire a junior that's never done a workshop before, then you need some resources that can help, you know, mentor them or, or teach them what to do, right? So, I mean, that, yeah, but that's also, I mean, that's super important and that's something that companies have to think about. Right? Yeah. For me, um, if, if I see job posts where they are looking for juniors and if they list a lot of stuff that is like way over the top for a junior, it, for me, it signals that that company isn't like UX mature. They don't really know what it means to do UX. UX, uh, I believe, started actually as a web design or whatever it was called, and then UX, and then suddenly all of these UX writers, UX researchers, UX analysts, and, and, and full-time jobs, all of them. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I think that a lot of this is companies that don't know what it actually means. And also because of... Uh, uh, a lot of UXers are not equal. <laughs> we are all different and all different backgrounds. A lot of people have transitioned from 
uh, front end development or this uh, graphic design stuff like that. So so it's not really transparent for the companies what they're actually getting. There are all these titles. Uh, what is a product designer, UI designer, UX designer? Uh, well, it's it can be hard for us as well to uh, figure out what people actually means. I've heard that product designer is uh, something different in Europe than it is in US. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, um, and that's really hard. I, I've struggled with it uh, for myself in the LinkedIn title. Uh, you know, what am I? <laughs> I can do a lot of st stuff. And what I've learned is that even though I can, I have a background in, in front end development as well, and I can do a lot of stuff, but it's, it's hard for companies to understand what I could do then. So then um, I say like, this is my special uh, uh, yeah. Exper expertise in this. And then mm -hmm. I also have knowledge in this. So I have perspectives in other uh, part of the industry as well. Yeah. Yours actually what you call T-shaped, right? Yeah. T-shaped UX. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you, your point is right that when you see job applications that, uh, or uh, um, not applications, ads, Oops, ads yeah, uh, with that long list of requirements, uh, that's often a company that just don't actually know what's, uh, what they want or what they need, actually. We could talk a lot about that. What about, I want to hear your opinions, what about when seniors apply for such job ads that states associate or junior UXers? Yeah, what well, is like, what about that kind of culture? Yeah, I, I think that's interesting because I'm searching for jobs at the moment and, and there's a lot of junior jobs out there and um, I, have, I have applied for, for some of them uh, just to to try it out and see yeah. what the, uh, what, not just to try it out, but to see what, what the outcome would be. And um, first of all, salary rise, they can't match it at all. But um, um, I think that they, well, what I have uh, learned about that, those um, conversations is that they will like uh, a, senior with the, the experience and the, 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 the width, as uh, Joachim is talking about, but I'm doubting that they are, can, can uh, honor that, uh, fulfill the job. Yeah, fulfill that, that job yeah, for me. Yeah. I, I, they will fulfill it for, for the juniors and, uh, and uh, having the perks as uh, we're talking about with Friday bars and, mm -hmm. and and uh, ping pong yeah. tables and all that uh, cliches, uh, but and want to attract a profile as me, uh, I'll I'll be out of there in half a half a year. Um, that's that's my take on it. Yeah, or else. But the question is that. But the question then is, why do you apply? Because because you know because in the way the employer gets suddenly intrigued and says oh wow can i actually get this senior profile that can do all of it mm -hmm. right and maybe it's and, and, and maybe she he is even willing to let's say go in a similar salary that i'm offering mm -hmm. so it's like it's just more to say like from the perspective of a junior it's mm -hmm. just it's already it's not that many jobs compared to the seniors and it's already so hard to get that kind of jump start Mm -hmm. that when when seniors start applying for these associate positions yeah. it makes it even less possible for us to land yeah. jobs you're right yeah. because we are someone that you need to take a risk in and they think they want to take a risk when they write the job ad but then they start getting these profiles and they start comparing because suddenly they get luna and they get orica and they're like oh that's like that's like i get so much more with luna let me talk mm -hmm. to her first yeah. and then see what we can go with that yeah, yeah. for me i i uh, i actually i applied for it wasn't a, a junior it wasn't a senior it was a ux design job uh, which i got but i didn't get it on the terms that was written in the post mm -hmm. uh i reached out because i like the company and it looked interesting and and also i, I saw that uh, well maybe there isn't 
they don't really know what uh, what the term means. So let's talk about it. And then I got hired as a senior, uh, and with that responsibility to it as well. So, so for me, I wouldn't uh, just settle on uh, you know growing up, becoming a senior, and then suddenly do junior work unless I had to slow down uh, life-wise because of twins <laughs> for example <laughs> yeah. yeah but I also I was speaking to somebody that was looking for a senior UXer recently and I mean okay I've, I've been in the business for about 20 years now so I consider myself to be what we're calling it senior, senior plus plus, plus. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just coining a new term here senior plus plus but um no, but, and, you know, and they were like, yeah, we're looking for a senior. And I was like, you're not, you know, they said they were, and then after speaking to them, it was like, oh, I guess we're looking for somebody with, you know, three years of experience. <laughs> like, I mean, no, I can't do that, you know. So it's interesting, but it's also interesting to see that a lot of people who post these jobs or a lot of recruiters who call you, they're like, oh, we have a UI UX job for you. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, or they'll say, uh, oh, I have this front end job, <laughs> you know. I had a digital designer job with UX skills. Yeah. <laughs> what does that I even had, mean? I know, right? I had somebody call me the other day and I said, uh, for a freelance job, right? A recruiter. And so I sent off my resume and then um, she called me after and she said, yeah, okay, well, I did send the resume to the company, but I have to ask you, do you know anything about design thinking? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I think it's kind of ingrown. <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. No, so they have no idea what they're hiring and what they're looking for, right? So, I mean, what can we do to help them? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 And how do we, you know, make them understand that they need help again? Maybe that's a bigger task, actually. <laughs> but that's the whole yeah. essence of yeah. this creating a culture change, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's also about us ourselves trying to dig deep and really knowing who are we as UXers, like what do we want to work with? Yes. So for example, I never applied for UX UI jobs, regardless how well I do know or not know any of those uh, programs, just because this is not what I want to work with. And I really try to stick to it by not mentioning any UI whatsoever, because I don't want those expectations to be connected to let's say my profile. Um, I might have two cents to say to my colleague if he's asking for it. But other than that, I don't want to be the one responsible. So therefore, I think it's also important to not just take positions that you think, okay, I might not have 40% of it, but I'll figure it out. If that's not what you want to figure out, then no need to even bother, you know, and be mediocre, uh, as Rona mm -hmm. mentioned before. Yeah. Um, so focus on what you actually are passionate about, or at least try to find out if that's your passion. Does everybody here know what their passions are? Is there like one certain skill? Yes? You're nodding? What, what's yours? Yeah, I mean, uh, I do design. So I think that uh, is really my uh, passion as well. To basically to uh, bridge uh, design and business to a certain extent, because I think uh, that, I mean, once you're doing a lot of UX and UI, there's there comes a time when you want to grow a lot more um, mm -hmm. and then you start looking at more revenues and you know more things uh, mm -hmm. you keep taking uh, you, you take more things on your plate and you know you deliver more and so I think um, uh, and for me I think the passion is really about using design to scale things up and scale systems up mm -hmm. because then there is no really uh, upper limit to what you're gonna achieve or do uh, right and and you just keep hustling towards uh, towards that scale, towards keep, you know? So so for, at, at one time you have a goal of, let's say, uh, talking very in simple terms like users. So uh, you have 100 users, 1000 users, 10,000 users. So you keep, you know, raising the bar up. And I think that scaling uh, part with design is really what I'm uh, passionate about. I'm being very specific, but mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. What's your main passion, Joachim? um solving problems yeah. i guess complex um, thing, right yeah I've, I've i've been in the game for a long time as well and uh, i think that i've learned that 
I, I'm not sure if this, uh, if it's uh, the millennial thing or whatever, but I think that the commercial point of view, I would rather work for a company who has an agenda instead of a product to sell, uh, because there's a lot of uh, psychology, there's a lot of superpowers uh, in design, and there's a fine line between ethics um, and by this, they don't really need stuff like that. I, I think that it can be hard. So, so I believe if, I, well, my background in development as well, I think it's interesting, but I, I think it's, it's important to focus on, yeah, on stuff like that. And, and yeah, I, th I think that's what, uh, yeah, what, what, uh, what makes, makes it easier for me to select from a, a job post, what are their actual goals? What different uh, difference in the world am I uh, helping them with? Uh, what are their uh, struggles? Uh, stuff like that, that, uh, yeah. And Orica? Yeah, for me, it's most definitely uh, the research part. Mm -hmm. So, um... The whole, you know, trying to figure out and understand the user's needs. So the interviews, the workshop facilitation, the ideation, that's definitely, I think, my strength. Mm -hmm. And I also, when it comes to the products, I realize that I really enjoy working with, uh, with systems. So something that is not design crowded, but more complex in the sense of like working with different tables, different, you know, sets of information trying to make sense of it and trying to in a way visualize it but still more ux visualize it in a more um yeah understanding way based on the user needs so i think that's definitely what i enjoy the most mm -hmm. and ishita would you like to join in or i see you watching <laughs> no what's your favorite what's your passion oh, oh i'm sorry oh, yeah go ahead Hi, actually, Hi. I am not experienced into UI. I'm an IT consultant, so I'm learning UX right now using okay. Figma. So mm -hmm. it was really nice uh, knowing everyone's experience of hiring. So maybe I'll be there soon. Yeah. You're very welcome to, everybody here is very welcome to reach out on LinkedIn if you want to connect. Um, yeah. Sure, sure. I'll be studying HCI now. Okay. So, yeah. So I was really interested. That's why I joined. That's good. Well, you're very welcome. What's your passion? Well, um, <laughs> I just try to. <laughs> <laughs> um, the concept development, the uh, the problem solving, as uh, Joachim is talking about, and the user centric approach. Mm -hmm. uh, so the user is just, I tend to say that the U in UX is. Is my fuel. Um, I I really love talking to the user and 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 getting to understand them. Uh, I have a, uh, a background where I have uh, done a lot of um, enterprise uh, solutions. So yeah. that's um, users that I just can't think of their struggles and their uh, pains. So I have to go out there and experience them, and that's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, same here. Um, yeah. So, so the, the first part of that whole process, yeah. just that's me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and being there from the beginning, right? Not being like, of course, being there. Yeah. 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 And, and, well, it's given for me, but it's not giving out there. I can, no. I can hear in, in, uh, in different companies where UX is very different as your concerns uh, worldwide, but also just in, the, in Denmark. Uh, um, in, from different companies, just from, from smaller uh, companies to, to larger corporations, mm -hmm. it's very different jobs, oh, yeah. uh, even though it sounds the same in the, um, in the ads. Um, it's very different, I think, yeah. But has it changed in, you know, the last 20 years? Because back in the day, you know, UXers would be called in last minute to make things pretty. Is it still like that or? Yeah, or, or making tests in the yeah. last minute. Yeah, when, when like after done. everything's yeah. programmed yeah. Yeah. or developed or yeah, <laughs> yeah. programmed. Yeah. <laughs> I think that part has changed. Has well, it? Uh, some, you tell some, me. Yeah. yeah, my experience is somewhere. Yeah. Some, some places yeah. it, that has changed, yeah. 
What's your opinion? That's not my experience, that's for sure. Good. At least for now. Good. Yeah. Yeah, it seems like things are changing. I mean, there is still a lot because I, I, I think it's, um, it's good to understand how and why it happened because, uh, you know, in development, uh, there, is a, there are a lot of frameworks and, you know, so much already out there systems that people want to just start out with, um, uh, you know, developing things. And then they realize, oh, we missed uh, a crucial part of it because mm-hmm. uh, we want to launch. We want to get out in the market. We want people to test. And in that sense, design sort of slows them down. Ideally, you shouldn't because uh, because we have to actually rethink and say that design is the first approach. It's not mm-hmm. actually building something out and putting it out there, right? It's actually uh, building the idea, creating that prototype, having it tested in the market. And then, um, so so I think it's, just flipping it on its head, which is slow, sort of changing, but not completely because, uh, yeah, the development thing goes, you know, first. Well, I, I think mean, that's I what think my experience has been. As you're talking about the how and why, uh, that's very important because I, well, my experience from, I've been there for, for a long time, um, doing that, that's uh, a, a, um, new approach uh, to the design uh, uh, and that benefits it's uh, definitely, it, it will improve its, uh, it improves its a lot uh, and you getting that seat at the table, yeah. asking that those questions instead of just talking design when you're talking visual design, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, but it's okay to prove your point later on also, I think mm-hmm. um, you can, you know, get in and then prove yourself and prove your point that design matters and uh, then claim the seat. I think that that's also sometimes okay. So Rather so, than being feeling entitled to it. Sorry, yeah. uh, go ahead, please. No, I was just going to make a stupid joke. <laughs> so who was a, well, one, I am um, uh, the 20, well, was it Greg Nobleman saying that, well, if you've got the UX position, yeah. They have hired you. You're actually paying you to do it. So do it. Don't don't expect you to. Uh, you don't have to fight for it. You're in there. Yeah, that's yeah. true. That's true. But it, the feeling can be uh, different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wanted I wanted to kind of disagree a little bit because Apshishek. Uh, don't want to say it wrong. Um, you mentioned something about like kind of take your time and prove, and this is where I kind of disagree. Because if just to give you an analogy, let's say it's kind of like, let's say if you look at how women had it, you know, a hundred years ago, they always constantly had to keep proving things that they deserve to be in this high position. And I personally, I refuse to prove anyone anything. I believe I'm just as equal. <laughs> yeah. wow. I believe I'm just as equal and I work the same amount as any other gender or anyone else. So the same, let's say with the position I work the same way as a developer with who already have, let's say, a seat at the table or a business person, you know, they need me as much as I need them. So I think it's a team. So hopefully I don't need to prove anything. And as Lona said, I was hired for a reason. Yeah. And it's about trusting yourself that that reason is there, you know, and, and voicing your uh, opinions. Yeah. And sometimes the reason is not what you think it is. I mean, recently I was doing a project where I realized that they had hired me to do some UX and in reality, what I could do is go in and tell them that the governance was wrong or, you know, you know, I mean, that kind of thing. So sometimes your role as, at least for a freelancer coming from the outside is to point out some things that are, you know, not necessarily related to that project that you're working on, but like higher or deeper in the culture or something like that. I thought that was pretty insightful actually, learning that. <laughs> that was actually my job, yeah. And that could- Don't you think that Power. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Did I interrupt you? Go ahead, please. Oh, well, that, that could be a real power yeah. as well, especially coming from the outside as a yeah. freelancer, because you can get, or, or a consultant, you could come in and ask all the nasty questions yes. and putting that elephant, yeah. oh, that lit on the elephant in the room. Yeah. Um, that's that's powerful. interesting and powerful and, and, and valuable for them also, right? Yes. Yes. So I will, 
if you it's not always you get to do that but but if there is that trust between your client and you you can mm -hmm. also ask them is there an elephant i need to put a yeah. lid on or a light on or a not a lid mm -hmm. a light on a, or is there a some stakeholders we need to pamper a bit or is that political agenda as well mm -hmm. is quite interesting especially when you are going in and uh, doing the research, user research and, and the um, stakeholder management. Yeah. 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 So that's it. Abhishek, did you want to say something else? Yeah. Uh, no, I was just saying that, uh, I mean, I see that gender-based equity and um, this, you know, work-based equity are slightly different. Like for gender, no doubt, hands down. You, you actually, you know, it has to be seen that way. It's 50-50, it's not, you know, um, it was, it just started wrong actually. But uh, let's say tomorrow there could be other new divisions, new areas. And if people understand it on their own, it's great. But if they don't, let's say I come up with this really great idea, right? A revolutionary idea, but uh, people may not agree or believe in it at first. So I need to, and uh, my point for proving it, uh, proving yourself was only uh, towards that. That if I come up with some idea and I see, that UX could be that idea, that revolutionary idea, then I need to make a point. I need to prove that, hey, this is going to really benefit you. Uh, so that's just a slight you know, difference I see in the yeah. two things. Where are you in the world? Sorry, yeah, I, I'm in India. I'm based in India. You're in India. Whereabouts in India? Yeah. Uh, the capital, Delhi. Okay. And Ishita, yeah. where are you? Uh, I'm from Pune. Where's that? Um, it's in West India. Okay. Near Mumbai. So. Okay. That's really. And what are you, what is your um, take on the you know the feminist and stuff that Arika was just talking about? I cool. haven't faced any issue in my office. I mean, we are given equal privileges. Everything is equal. Okay. So, I haven't faced any kind of stuff because uh, I work in an MNC there. So it's kind of good, like all the policies and everything are strict. So we don't face such things. So good to hear. Well, what about you, Joachim? What's it like at your company? Are you pretty equal? Uh, well, I'm the guy, so I shouldn't really. Well. Uh, I, I don't experience that the, there isn't equality. I, my past like four bosses was women and uh, they all rocked. Um, I also feel like in the UX industry, there's a lot of uh, female power. Uh, kind of feeling like uh, this FOMO is getting to me with this the ladies that UX stuff. What, what's up with that? What about uh, the guys? Um, yeah. So, yeah. Could not agree more. You are very yeah. welcome to join. It's a weird <laughs> discussion though, isn't it? Because yeah. Sometimes, I was always against it. <laughs> sometimes it's not sometimes it's good for women to go together. You know, they they're like women are often, I don't know, maybe I'm generalizing, but we're good at, you know, creating these sisterships and we kind of support each other. And sometimes if there are males, people aren't that comfortable talking. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's a good idea. I think it, it's kind of weird. Um, yeah. yeah, probably yeah, depends I, on the situation. Yeah. I, I totally agree. I, I don't feel comfortable in 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 uh, 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 forms like that. Uh, but I see the necessity, the yeah. necessity uh, for it uh, some places because it's uh, especially when you talking IT somewhere and uh, some. Places out there, there's very uh, heavily uh, male oriented still. Um, so, I, unfortunately, I think it's still necessary for, for some to uh, to have those um, communities. Yeah. 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 But I think for the networking purposes as such, because it's not that we are talking about the girly things, you know, and we don't want the boys to listen. <laughs> this is a professional. This is a professional environment most of the time from my experience. Yes. So I do believe that if males are, let's say, in those top positions, I want to learn from that person regardless of his gender, right? Yeah. 
So yeah. I don't want to exclude a good example of someone who paved the way in a way. Uh, I mean, I do understand there is a reason for it, but I think within the UX community, I do think there's a lot of, lot of females, even in, I mean, in our company, we are in, 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 in the design team, 80%, you know, women and 20% mm-hmm. men. So okay. yeah, yeah, we're only girls pretty much, two guys. At the, at the conference, it's usually about 53% women. So that's pretty interesting. So it's pretty equal. Cool. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I think it's more as we go higher, right? Like I was more mm-hmm. referencing to those higher positions, you know, I think that on the lower level employees, Everyone is quite equal. I think probably across the world, most likely. It's more when you start really climbing that career that suddenly sometimes you start realizing that a woman perhaps needs to work a little harder, especially in some, you know, industry, like some industries that are very, very male oriented. Let's say, you know, Grunfoss, you know, pumps uh, or um, take, I don't know, mask or something, you know, oil. So like more there, when this technical aspect comes in, sometimes male, they tend to dominate, I think. That's interesting, yeah. Well, I have worked with, uh, like I have worked in four projects and all my managers, senior manager were female. So, yeah, so I have experienced this, like it's more feminist kind of thing, I don't know, but all my managers, my lead, senior manager, all were females. That's great. That's good to hear. Yeah, so I can pack away all my biases about India. <laughs> yeah. I think it's more about how many CEOs are females. Yeah. Is that, that's how high I want to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, we've run out of time. It's all. Oh, yeah. Really? I don't know where that hour went. It's well, been so great speaking with you. And you know, this was um, this was the launch of the call for papers for Copenhagen. So please, you know, if you're interested in speaking, please let me know. Um, it was also the um, it was a discussion about the um, the theme for UX Copenhagen, and we'll be talking about it one more time on next Tuesday on the 9th at nine a.m. in Denmark, nine a.m. Central Time, Central European Time. So feel free to join us there on the 24 Hours of UX event. If you haven't heard of it, it's a 24-hour, you know, nonstop UX learning. So uh, go sign up. I think it's it's pretty cheap. It's um, like 15 euros or something. So it shouldn't be that bad. Um, and other than that, I just want to say thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I hope that you'll join us another t- um, UX. I mean, conversations with UX Copenhagen. And if you have a talk- topic that you'd like to bring up. It's a very informal, um, you know, uh, um, I'm losing my set up. Set up. Set up. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, if you want to talk about a subject, then let me know. And I would be happy to host that. That'd be fun. How, how, how can we apply for that? Like, do we need to write to uh, write some email somewhere or? Sure, yeah, you can write to hello at uxcopenhagen.com. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, you mentioned. That. Or I think okay. you have my email also because I think the um, I think Eventbrite sends it out maybe. But hello at uxcopenhagen.com would be great. Uh, got it. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope to see you all again and have a wonderful evening or day or or <laughs> it must be nighttime. In yeah. 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 Thanks so much for joining everybody. Take care.